Let's start with this citation, uh, since it's very aligned to what I'm bringing you guys today. By being able to manipulate the code of life, we are going to create new ways of living, and that's extremely powerful. Now, I invite you to imagine the tomorrow we all are talking about at this event. New ways of living, new ways of growing older. How do you see yourself in 5, 10, 15 years? How do you feel? How will you look? And what if I tell you that we are getting closer to being able to manipulate the code of life, the code of aging? Let's take our embryonic development as a starting point to understand biological aging. We all come from a single cell, and that means that we have all the genetic information that we need in that cell that's going to create the whole organism. So this is the code of life. Each cell uses specific information available in this primary DNA database, and generate different cell types. So by modifying which information a cell uses, we are able to generate any cell type of the body, like a skin cell or a heart cell, for example. And in this sense, we can say that cells are like machines that you can program and reprogram by basically turning on and off specific genes. This regulation system is called epigenome. It's a network of chemical modifications surrounding the DNA that controls which genes are active in a particular cell type. And interesting, this controls not only the cell types, but also the age of our cells. So the aging process is clock-like in the sense that a steady accumulation of changes eventually degrades the efficiency of a cell in the body. And one of the biggest breakthroughs in science was when Yamanaka and his group showed that we can reverse the aging process. So following his lead, we can now induce an adult cell to become a stem cell like again, by reactivating only four critical genes that are able to reset the clock. So these four genes, called the Yamanaka factors, they are so powerful that they are able to reprogram even a skin cell back to an embryonic state again. So this was the first time that we could manipulate the code of life and reset the, this aging clock. And it's a process that we call total reprogramming. It, this also suggests that if we can go all the way back to a stem cell-like stage, we can also go back halfway, and we could turn an old cell to a young one. And this is a process that we call partial cell reprogramming. So, Applying this idea not only to a single cell, but to a whole organism, Belmont and his group showed that reprogramming is a stepwise process and that a small dose of Yamanaka factors might rejuvenate the tissues or cells without promoting loss of cell identity. So he could rejuvenate the mice, but this healthy rejuvenation is only possible with a fine control of the level of the cell or tissue reprogramming. So knowing that this is scientifically possible, as shown in model organisms, this is the strategy that we are pursuing to develop products and solutions to finally rejuvenate the skin. We won't be using the Yamanaka factors that could be very risky considering the possibilities of generating tumors, but instead we'll be using new compounds that are able to induce only partial tissue reprogramming in a safe and efficient way. However, 
In order to achieve this goal, we need to be able to understand better how biological aging works, especially for skin. We named this process as decoding skin aging, and by decoding, we refer to our efforts to understand the regulation of aging, to be able to measure it, to replicate it in vitro, and finally to propose the most efficient inter interventions to reverse that process. So the idea of quantifying aging relies on finding biological markers that correlate with chronological age. There are several strategies one could use, including measuring the length, of the telomere length, the level of gene or protein expression, and finally, the epigenetic markers. The epigenetic markers have been shown to predict age with the highest accuracy. That means that the correlation of the markers evaluated with chronological age is higher than 0.8. So the way that one correlates this epigenetic information with age is using an algorithm that was developed by this brilliant researcher, Steve Horvath. And the beauty here is that the, the outcome of this analysis is a number that reflects the molecular age of a given cell or tissue. And as a proof of concept that this clock works, if you, you measure the age of a skin cell before reprogramming, you probably find the age of its donor, around 30 years, for example. And after the total reprogramming with the Yamanaka factors, that age goes back to zero. So Steve's algorithm has led to extraordinary uh, conclusions and has also led to the observation that the different tissues may, dif may age differently. Therefore, we decided to build our own algorithm focused exclusively on the skin. And by doing that, we were able to achieve a better age prediction compared to Horvath's molecular clock. And as you can see here, we reached a correlation of 0.9, and we are super excited about these results. So now we are applying this algorithm to, me to measure the age of the cells and the tissues that we grow in the lab. And we are able to replicate and to accelerate the aging process in vitro. So I brought some results, to some preliminary results to share with you guys today, using the skin cells that we use to grow our tissues. So once these cells are treated with uh, age-inducing uh, treatment, we measure the level of senescence, since we know that uh, uh, senescent cells accumulate in the tissue if aging. And once we treat these cells with a reference compound, we could see a decrease in the number of senescent cells, labeled here in blue and quantified here in this chart. We also saw a decrease in some gene markers that are related to aging. And finally, when we measured the age of these cells before and after treatment, we saw initially, initially an age around 30 to 33 years. And after the compound treatment, we saw a reduction in the age of the cells of up to five years. So that means five years of rejuvenation. So this is very interesting, and it's the first time that one can quantitatively measure the rejuvenation power of a given molecule. And we believe that we are going to disrupt the anti-aging market with this technology. Why? Because now we can show the effects of all anti-aging compounds in a quantitative way. There is no room for placebo effects anymore. And it's also important to highlight, so what we are doing now, we are replicating the, the effects that we have seen 
in the cells, now in the tissues that we grow in the lab, and we'll be able to show a young skin, an aged skin, and how much we can reverse treating that aged skin with an anti-aging compound. And the results will be seen, will be perceived visually, like you can see through these images, and will be also quantified using our new algorithm. And then we'll be able to claim how many years a given molecule can really rejuvenate an aged skin. It's important to highlight that this reprogramming concept was already demonstrated using different models like mice, cells, or C. elegans. And now we are showing the same event using human tissues. And we believe that this is the shortest path to human rejuvenation as a whole. And besides using more realistic models, we are also using a more re reliable tool to measure this effect, a tool that is not, that is not subjective that is, and is highly accurate. So you might be thinking, how long it will take so I am, I am able to use a product that contains this molecule. How long to my skin to look young again? And I have good news for you. We are already screening new compounds, and we are having very good results. And soon we'll be able to select the ones that have the largest effect on skin rejuvenation. How many years we'll be able to take from your skin is something that we can't tell right now. But the challenge is as huge as the benefit that we'll be able to provide. The two things that we can say at this point are the molecule that we'll be releasing will be effective, and two, they will be safe. Stay tuned. Thank you.